Uber anyway, procrastinator. And so when the prices kind of came together a little bit, I went, nah, well, I'll just wait. So I haven't switched yet, but I plan to. They plan to. Listen, the, um, we got, we got the cut off there when we're talking. Uh, you never took a, a journalist course. No, I never did. Uh, you know, I went to university, got a degree, and then, and then I, uh, just went to work. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I never really had an ambition to be a journalist or reporter. Never really thought much about it. And uh, but when I moved back here to New Brunswick, I really, you know, felt that there, you know, that there was there was some missing uh, stuff. That that there were some stories not getting reported. And um, so one day I called the Globe and Mail up and I said uh, I asked them if they'd be interested in in. Uh, Articles, you know, I, I'd quit. I'd quit a job at the St. John Board of Trade. I didn't really enjoy working there, and uh, for the business community there, and uh, so I was looking for something to do. So I called the Globe Mail up, and they said, "Yeah, we could use a contributor from New Brunswick. Sight unseen, no training, no background. Ooh. I just happened to live in New Brunswick, and they needed somebody in New Brunswick." And I just happened to make the phone call at the right time, and uh, the right person answered the phone, and uh, one thing led to another, and uh, here you are. Here I am. What do you think of bloggers? Well, uh, I think blogging, the you know, well, it's, that's a big question, Charles. I mean, it's uh, there's, you know, say out of a thousand bloggers, some do excellent work. They actually contribute a lot to. Uh, you know, the daily information that people get. You know, it's instantaneous. You can transmit information if you've got good information uh, to people. And but a lot of it's just self-involved. Uh, people like to talk about themselves or their interests or whatever. It's like a diary. But you know what? People who are really dedicated to it find it difficult. I find, like, you know, there's some blogs in the province that you start reading, and, um, boy, the, like, they just they stop. People just, it's so much work yeah, or no pay or, you know, it's like after a while people, it just tires people out, wears them out. I mean, uh, except for you, of course. Oh, yeah, I have ADHD. Unbelievable <laughs> stamina. I mean, I, I don't know, if you ever counted up how many actual subjects you've blogged? I mean, it must be in the thousands. Ten. 12,000. 10,000 12, before the Irving shut her down the old yeah. blog. But anyway, that's not a story. We're not here to talk about me, me, me. What's your opinion on Diane Borky that passed away? You and North River Valley News. Well, I didn't know her very well. But, you know her? No. Um, but, you know, I, it was a quirky newspaper. I read it every once in a while. I remember your column was in there. Yep. And, uh, I mean, that's a terrific little enterprise in a, in a community. And um, it's tough to get to keep those things going. I mean, there's a, even, you talk about the Carl Free Press closing down, there's a lot of little community papers that got pressured by various flyers and things uh, put out by, you know, uh, Brunswick News so that had to shut down. So to keep that going for so long, well, that's quite an accomplishment on her part. And for the people who spoke so well for, you know, after she uh, passed away, I mean, it sounds like she's a pretty remarkable woman. All the interviews you did, who's the best politician you like to interview that you enjoyed interviewing? Okay. You got me on the spot here because I, I want to – I really, you know, uh, there's you know, there's a whole lot of really terrific politicians. I mean, a lot of people just generally trash – like to trash politicians. But, you know, my favorite politician of all time is, I think, Jim Lockyer the Liberal MLA from Moncton, and uh, I really like um, Greg Thompson from uh, Carl and Charlotte. You were at the night, the federal yeah, election. Yeah, I was at his... What, uh, what were you doing there? I mean, I thought Robert Jones knew everything. Didn't you know that that guy was going to win? No problem? Yeah, the CBC wanted to pick a place where they knew they were going to get a conservative to win, and where they knew they were going to get a liberal to win. Well, they sent... You know, one to Paul Zedzoff, that was a mistake. But Thompson, you know, he's New Brunswick's cabinet minister, and he's sort of uh, the big guy in the province. So you want to you want to be there for his victory, although his victories are boring. I mean, yeah, I know. You know, uh, the first poll. Yeah, I know. The first poll is over. He had a poll in, uh, I think it was in, um, in McAdam. 
and it was the poll came in. It was 105 for Thompson, five for uh, who's the liberal McIntosh, and four for uh, anyway. It was, it was unbelievable. It, like the guy is so popular in there, and it's nice to see actually uh, a guy who's been a politician that long and is that popular. Yeah. Like people will respect that. You know, people. You can be a politician and be respected. I call him uh, the great Lou Murphy. That's what I compare him to. His, Just his, a good local constituency his, guy? Yeah, his, his character, his yeah. character. That's yeah. what I call I call him that ten, 10 years ago. Well, you talk about, you know, you're talking about press ownership issues. Thompson's spoken out on that before in uh, the House of Commons. Um, I mean, he's an independent-minded conservative. He's an old progressive conservative, you know, out of the old uh, PC wing of the party. And uh, just a decent guy, nice guy, and um, you know, I, I, I've never heard anyone speak badly of uh, Greg Thompson. The reason I like Jim Lockyer, I mean, that was that goes back a long time. But you know, years ago, when the when uh, liberal MLAs and conservative MLAs and the NDP MLA were changing the pension plan in Fredericton for MLAs, they said this is too rich and too good, and we we got to downscale it because it's a bad sign for the public. Uh, they changed all the rules and made the pension plan much more frugal, except they gave themselves the opportunity to opt out. So you, so the existing members could exempt themselves from the legislation. And everybody who, including Premier McKenna and all the uh, top cabinet ministers, all exempted themselves. They passed these new rules for new MLAs and wouldn't live by them themselves. The only MLA who took the new deal, because he felt if they're going to pass it for the new guys, they should take it for themselves with Jim Lockyer. And uh, I've never forgotten that, because that's cost him tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars by now. Uh, but he just did it quietly and privately. A lot of character there. Are you ever going to write a book? I don't. I don't even read books anymore. I can barely get through magazine articles. How about you? Like just so much experience, so many met so many people. Yeah. Well, who would who would read it? Who would read it? My mother. Your mother. Your cousin. And uh, maybe you. Well, you check it out of the library, so that wouldn't even <laughs> I wouldn't even get any royalties out of that. Why did Norm McFarland? Uh, why did Norm McFarland lose? You know, I kind of like Norm McFarland. I mean, you know, the the uh, the city turned on him. There's no question about that. But uh, he uh, he just he had that anchor of the uh, LNG deal tied around his neck, and uh, he just you know as soon as that deal happened, you know he was a dead man walking as far as his political.